All right, it's the beginning of October and I just pulled a few more loofahs off the vine. Like, look at that Mac Daddy right there. I brought in my other loofah into our pool house to sit in front of this window and dry out. When I brought them out here, I wanna say it was like these two were starting to brown. So the others are starting to turn colors, as we can see, and dry out. But this is what I don't like. So I'm not really sure what to think and what to do about that. Um, but there's others that are drying very nicely that I'm encouraged by that um, seem very promising. But I, of course, don't want to have a mold problem on my hands and have it spread to the others, which is why they're all laid out, not touching. Yes, they're close, but they're not touching. Um, but they're doing well for the most part. And like this one, I could go ahead and peel this. I mean, those seeds are super loose. But I found, I wanted to give like a big picture just so we can kind of see like how long it takes the majority of them to turn brown and get ready to peel. But I will say, so long as these don't mold and that we don't lose like half or all of them or anything crazy like that, I think this was a pretty good call because when I looked out on my vines, I was noticing a lot more flowers starting to pop up which means we have more fruits coming. And I have had several more baby loofahs come out and show their pretty little selves. And even, like I said, a few to harvest in addition to what I already did. And I feel like that's because these got big enough to where like, they were a great size to call it quits and harvest. I mean, those are all very large loofahs. But I think that the plant was still putting energy into those that were on the vine that were pretty much in a state of being done growing. So we'll see how the drying process turns out. If it's bad, I'll regret cutting them. But if it's not, I think it was a good call because I think I'm gonna get more off of that vine than I would have if I would have left them. And the reason I say that is because I could pretty well see how many loofahs I had. And then when I cut all of them back, I really didn't have any flowers. And then it was about a week later when the whole fence side was just covered in these new loofah flowers. So. Right now I'm enthusiastic about it, I'm optimistic, and we'll keep you posted. The other news that I have to share is, um, well, I'm standing in the window right now, I'll have to show you an outside view. All behind the pool house got mulched. I mean, the whole thing. It was two truckloads of mulch, and then you can see right back there, I got my first raised bed to test out. I wanted, before buying like nine of them, I wanted to buy one, put it together, see how cumbersome it was to put together and see how I felt about it. So far, so good. Um, I'm excited about the idea of like looking out. Those pallets won't be there anymore. They're just too heavy for me to look by myself, but I'm excited to look out this back window or these back windows and just see abundance and growing things. It's gonna give us more space to grow, which means we will have more to harvest, which is a huge perk, obviously, and the point of it all. So we're gonna keep chugging along this month. Maybe we'll get fencing start to be put in. Um, I have more mulching to do on the hillside. Laid cardboard down and laid the mulch on top of it, like about six inches thick um, all the way around, if not more. And this was all done in one week. Okay, I decided to bring in some of my nice and brown dried loofahs inside to try a few different things. I'm worried about the moldy ones. So these that are nice and dry, I'm gonna pop the ends off, shake the seeds into this bowl and then store them in a mason jar. But then the ones that are moldy, I got a sad baby. The ones that are moldy, I wanna go ahead and try to peel and see if I can stop the mold from growing. So let's get to work. <laughs> One thing I've done is like taken it and just kind of hit it. All right, this is one loofah, and like that's how many seasons, and there's more. I hear them still. Okay, 
update. My opinion is this, it's hard to get all of the seeds out of the loofah, so it made me sad to think of submerging it in the water, but right here, my sink is full of water, and basically what I've done, what I've done is I've shaken out as many as I possibly can. This was getting very tedious. I was getting off bits like this, like just itty bitty little tiny bits and strings from the loofah. Once I wet it, I was able to fully get my finger underneath the skin without it just breaking and I was getting off larger chunks. So my suggestion is get as many seeds out as you can. And then once you do that, you can just like slide your finger all the way down. See, like, look, that is peeling much nicer. But this is the peeled loofah. I'm happy with that. And there's still seeds in there, even in the camera way over there. You can see those little black seeds. So what I'm gonna do, this is kind of what I did with my first one that I did. I'm gonna dry this again, see if I can knock some seeds out some more, and then I'll store them with the others. All right, update. I have peeled three loofah sponges so far, and I got this whole jar full. This wasn't even all of them. Like there's more inside these that I discussed, how you can, in the middle, you can see more seeds in there. But three sponges gave me more than I need. Three sponges gave me more than I need to grow an abundance of loofah next season. So I really don't even know that I'm gonna keep saving the seeds at this point, but I will like compost them or see if I can feed them to my chickens and my goats. That might be a great option, but soaking them is way easier and we will dry out the other sponges. Now I'm gonna start tackling the ones that have moldy spots. So fingers crossed, we'll see how that goes. All right, this is my last loofah and I'll say this. This is the worst looking moldy one. The other side's fine. This one's got a few spots. The other ones came out just fine. All right, so the few loofahs that I pulled out to go ahead and peel are done. And I have all of like the skins right here and nothing is gonna go to waste. Um, from what I can read, it looks like the seeds are okay for chickens to eat. So I actually need to mix more chicken feed like tomorrow. So I'm gonna take what's left over and go ahead and mix that into their feed and see what happens. Really hope that that advice is solid and that I don't like make my whole flock sick, but we shall see. But um, the raised bed that I got, I bought one. I need several, but I bought one just to try it out and see if I like it. I do, I mean, obviously I haven't had it for a few years to see how great it holds up, but so far so good. So I went ahead and ordered the rest and they will be here very soon. But stuff like this will not go to waste. I'm gonna compost it and I'm actually gonna use this to kind of start filling the bottom of those raised beds. So. I'm gonna let these stand upright to dry and let the water drain out of the bottoms. That's what I did with the one loofah that I cut before. But um, yeah, this is like the finished product. This one's dry, I've had this. Um, I use, I made my kids popcorn earlier, but I use a cast iron skillet every day. We have eggs, of course, so every morning I make eggs and I have been using this to clean my cast iron skillet every day. It washes out nicely. And um, yeah, when I'm done with it, I will just compost it as well. Okay, so the raised beds that I wanted went on sale. I bought one, liked it, and I bought several more. So they came in today and I built those two over there earlier today. I'll say this, the first one took me an hour to build. These do not have the plastic film on them that I see most people talking about, which is wonderful. Um, so I didn't have to worry about peeling that off. They are a little cumbersome to put together. It's really not that bad. There's just like 48 nuts and bolts to put in. And by the third one, I did it in less than 30 minutes by myself refereeing four kids. But the cool thing is, is that they're super light. So I built them in my carport because that's where they were delivered. And that's where I could keep an eye on my kids. Today was a rainy day, but I built them in here and I will very easily be able to walk them around the back in the garden. I wanna show you how light they are. This one gets, look at this. Super easy. Very light, I should weigh them. 
should weigh them and figure out how heavy they are. But they're not heavy. And I'm just picking them up by the center support. Um, yeah, so not bad, not bad at all. We are moving garden beds out to the garden and the goats are very confused by what's taking place. Okay, it is mid-October and I'm going to take you down where I've been working at the start of this month, all down there and show you how we got everything laid, like all the cardboard laid and all the mulch laid. Um, I started over here and then we had a week of rain and I wasn't able to get back out here and get to work, but this hillside is my next to do. Um, but I wanted to share how my loofah vines are doing, like the ones that are still out here. So as I said, we've got lots of baby loofah. We've got decent sized healthy loofah. And we've got one that looks like it's kind of drying up, which is a good sign. But um, yeah, a second ago, the angle that I was at, I was seeing just like a ton of little babies. Um, I'm still getting flowers still have plenty of flowers up here and um I've seen as I've said I've gotten a lot more growth okay here's some like they're hard to spot but there's a baby there's a baby there's a baby and then there's a big one so I tried a couple different methods for like peeling them, drying them, like cutting them, all that kind of stuff. What I found is if you have a loofah sponge at risk of molding, it's worth peeling. Um, they peel pretty easy when they are at risk of molding because there's still some moisture in there so you don't have to soak it. The kicker is, is that you're not gonna be able to get the seeds out. So you have to go ahead and cut them into sections and let those sections dry because when it's not cut, it just takes so much longer to dry. Um, which can cause the seeds inside to mold if in the middle it's holding more moisture. So it's more work, but it saves a loofah um, in that case. So I'm gonna try to put these on trash bags like right now before things go from bad to worse. Um, save my floors and we'll just keep letting them go and we'll just see how things turn out. I'm the giant. All right, a little bit of October progress. Right over here, Dylan has a truckload of seasoned wood that has not been split yet, but it is more than dry enough for us to use in the wood-burning stove. In the barrel, we're burning like sticks and stuff from inside the goat pen from when we'd feed them fallen limbs or limbs that we had to cut and stuff. We are starting to stack logs in our ring. I've got my drunk trailer full because inside we are filling up the barrel Here. that we have Take by our home. fireplace and the kids are filling it for me putting them to work no they don't need helmets to do this they were all just riding their bike and they never took them off all right it's october 31st so it is time to discuss what we completed this month and what we didn't um, I'm down here feeding the goats. <laughs> These girls love to just stick their heads all the way in there. So that's cute. Um, as you can see down here, there's a whole like mound of hay that has been fertilized that I plan to bring my dump trailer over here and load up. So Dylan kind of made a path like through these woods right here. And I plan to try to pull it up right here shoveling into my dump cart over the fence and use that in the garden. Um, I believe Rose is bred. Ivy probably isn't, but I believe Rose is. So I think we got a pregnant goat, at least one. Um, down here, <clears throat> when we first got the goats and the garden was not as Let's just say high priority or like high commitment as it is now. I would, when I would clean this stall out, I would throw all the stuff down the hillside. And so once again, I'm gonna take the dump trailer and I'm gonna try to dig this out. 
if it poses to be too difficult because I can't get the dump trailer in here, I'll use a wheelbarrow. And if I can't make that work, then at least from here on out, when I change this stall out, I will, last time I did that, I used five gallon buckets and I filled the buckets and then I put the buckets in my dump trailer. Here's the problem. Now I have all this manure and I have nowhere to put it um, because we're gonna go down to the garden and we're gonna do a, one last loofah check for the month because I was actually walking down to the pool house to go grab the loofahs that need to be peeled and cut. But all that to say, the garden has improved, but we've still got a lot of work to do. Um, part of this is because we went camping for a while and then we all got sick. Do I have a bruise there? A little bit. Um, we went camping for a while and then we all got sick. So a lot of things just came to a screeching halt. But the good news is, is that we do have firewood. Dylan has been chopping it and we have not run out. And we've been using our wood burning stove and have not had to utilize the propane. So that is the goal this whole winter is not to turn that stuff on. So anywho, let's go down to the garden and we'll talk about where we got, which is not far from the beginning of the month and where we're going. While I'm down here, I just thought of something. My dad had this awesome idea and half of our property is wooded and half of it is not. And my dad said that his chicken coop was kind of starting to smell. So when the leaves were nice and dry, he blew them into a pile, ran them over with his mower and threw them in his chicken coop. And he said instantly it didn't smell anymore. And I was like, well, wait, that's just a genius idea for several reasons. One, my husband does do yard cleanup and he does get a little bit frazzled when everything is just buried in leaves. So do something productive with them. Two, we all know that gardeners love broken down leaves in their garden. What better than to have chickens poop on them and further break them down so I can put that on my garden. And three, this is zero waste and zero cost. November is gonna bring a lot of gratitude. <laughs> we did not get probably half of what I thought I would get done in October as we did. So in November, I'm gonna be grateful for what we have done. I'm gonna be grateful for what we get done. And I'm going to notice the things that we have already been doing that mean something to me. But I do want to focus on, it's a self-sustainability thing, but it's also like a no waste and a lot of times no cost. Like pulling my goat poop out of there. We all know that people pay really good money for manure. I have that. Yay. I do the deep litter method in my coop. I have a pile of chicken poo that's well over a year old that I've been baking down. And I'm going to come out here. I mean, look at all the space of leaves that we have. I'm going to blow a big pile of leaves together when they're dry. <clears throat> and I'm going to collect shavings for my chicken coop and my goat pen. Maybe we won't buy shavings this year. No, they're not expensive, but it's a thing. And then this mulch pile has been sitting here for months. That's going to be my base layer in my raised beds. Um, it's not fully broken down, but in the first, like, half of my raised beds, it won't really matter. We're also going to come and pull all the mulch out of the run and let the chickens start fresh. But then the cool part is, is where this mound is, right here, we found that that mulch is well broken down and it's delicious black dirt. So that's going to be what's on top along with goat and chicken manure. But let's go check out the garden. And while we're walking down this way, Yes, I miss my bees, something terrible. I'm walking by my beehive right now. I miss my bees. About once a week, I will say, I miss my bees. Um, we're still eating honey. I mean, we had two gallons. We gave a gallon to my parents because my dad built the beehive. But uh, we have two gallons. And we've gone through several pints, um, which is great. But uh, I miss my bees, <laughs> something terrible. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's start with what we have done. I won't, I won't start with what we have to do. I will start with what we have done on a positive note. We have completely covered the area behind the pool house. That is fully mulched, fully mulched. Um, this little trash pile right here has wire attached to some posts. And what I need to do is pull the wire off so we can save the posts. <sighs> Let's just go ahead and say what we need to do while we're here. All my raised beds are down there. I have 
on this fence line the posts and cattle panels needed to arch between the raised beds. So there's six down there and we're gonna put four arches up between some of the beds. So all that to say, <clears throat> the beds are not filled, nor are they set. We have not come over here and set the T-posts and attach the panels so that I can then begin filling the beds. But here's what we have. These are, these are gonna move. We just, we just haven't done that because I can't do it by myself. And Dylan can't do it by himself. And there's a rare moment that the both of us are available at the same time. But here's what I have pulled out of my goat stalls. And I have it over here because I'm going to dump it in these things. And then I peeled um, loofahs. And I put all like the peel down in here. But um, yeah. Like I said. So this is like a row of three. There's going to be an arch here. And then an arch between those two. That's not where they're going to be. That's not. This is not set in place. This is not even spacing. It's just, they're out here. So here's the problem. <clears throat> you probably can't see. At the top of, yeah, you kind of can. At the top of this hill, there's a pile of mulch that we halfway got done spreading. And then he was like, hey, I'm right around the corner. You want another load of mulch? And we were like, well, I, I guess you can put it in the same spot as the one that's already there. And he didn't realize that it was at the top of that hill. And he came and he dumped it here, which blocks the driveway which I showed you the mulch pile that we've had for months and months that's like halfway broken down we were gonna pull Dylan's truck up to that lay it with a tarp shovel that halfway broken down mulch into there and then back the truck into here and scoot it off the back of his truck straight into the beds we can't get the truck back here because this ginormous pile of mulch is in the way and now it has sat here for about two weeks and it's gotten rained on several times so it's gonna be even harder to spread than when it was first dropped off Maybe the beds might be starting to get filled if we had not told him to come bring this load. And it's not even in a really convenient location where we want to spread it. But we've got to spread this load. We've got to spread this load. This hillside is kind of a disaster. Let's go see why. Okay, here's the half spread pile that is just sitting on my driveway. So I came and halfway covered this hillside with cardboard. And when I tried to bring either a wheelbarrow or my dump trailer back here, I didn't have enough space to turn my dump trailer around. And then I've also got a small retaining wall right here. So I can't even get it all the way on that end. The cardboard moves and it doesn't stay put. It's killed a decent amount of grass. Still haven't even touched this part. Like it's bushy and grassy because you start from the back and you go forward. It is what it is, and I really don't know what to do about it, other than work really hard. Costco roses are still going, and lucky enough for me, we have a generous gardener coming to greet us. Let's see. Do we have any more crown princess? Oh, no. Something. Oh. <laughs> Something is starting to attack this one. Okay, so we just treat it and move on. I don't even know how to prune those. Somebody's gonna come show me so I don't do it wrong. It's my first time ever with climbing roses. So anyways, all that to say, over here on this hillside, I could get my dump trailer over here and lay this down. Uh, better something than nothing. I need to, I need to do something. Hmm, this, I think it's called a Gerindel pumpkin. The vine is growing, but something keeps eating the flowers up. Well, there's a flower. I highly doubt I'm gonna get a pumpkin off of this though. Um, I'm letting these loofah grow over here. We're doing pretty well. I'm gonna let these just go on the vine and see the difference. I'm still, look at this, still getting baby loofahs. I mean, this one is not very big either. Once they start growing, they really grow. But yes, this is insane. I mean, look, there's like two here. There's several here. We try to spread these out so they grow a little straight. Because they will kind of curve with their surroundings. 
but uh lucky me those are doing well i will tell you this i didn't plant sunflowers and i told myself i'm not planting anything for like the fall winter season but having these silly loofahs has really brought me joy and it's kind of given me the motivation and purpose to keep going with my garden amongst all of this work speaking of loofahs I think this is pretty much all I want to talk about this space for right now. I think it's clear that in November, my hope and my dream and my prayer, literally I'm not even worried about the garden fence yet. We can get that up in December or January for all I care. Haven't even thought about putting apple trees back here. It's not time yet anyway. So see, that's, that's a blessing. We have time. We have time for things. My hope and my prayer for the month of November, it's cold, it's wet, it's nasty. And the longer we wait, the colder it's going to get. So I really would love for the mulch to be done in here and for the raised beds to be set. I ordered um, a decent amount. I'm trying to break this blue off. It doesn't want to come off. Um, I ordered a decent amount of seed garlic from MI Gardener. And the raised beds don't have dirt in them. So right now I can't plant it. So I'm hoping that I can get some dirt in there in time to be able to put the garlic in. I know I said I wasn't going to plant anything, but I couldn't help myself. And it's going to be a whole nother year before I can even plant garlic if I don't try now. So I tried. Well, I bought it and I will try. All right. This is where I'm going to end my update because I have let this go on long enough as it is but i have this bushel of loofah that i need to de-seed and peel and cut and since we went camping i see about four more that i need to take inside and then these other guys are still just working away so my opinion <clears throat> and this is my first time growing loofah so i don't know if it's just my region or if it would have done this anyways but my opinion is me doing that initial sweep and harvest made the plant have like a second fruiting potentially. Um, and now I have a whole lot more loofah on my vines again. Would it have grown that many if I left these on the vine? My instincts tell me no. And I think that me pulling these off, if you have the ability and the space to dry them inside somewhere, I vote do it. Um, like I said in my video last month, my thought behind it was, they might rot on the vine, but I know there's a way to dry them inside. So I'm gonna go get to work on these loofah. And once we're all well, we're gonna keep chopping firewood and we're gonna keep shoveling mulch and we're gonna get this stuff done. See you in November.